I think growing up, there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself, but also I think the world puts on you to identify a certain way. And I think in the future, I'd like to see it just not be like something you think of, like everyone is just themselves and you accept that and you're not thinking about it as much. Hi, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. My name is Alana McGinnis. I'm a cis lesbian uh, software engineer. Well, I'm originally a biomedical engineer and as of now, I don't do any coding, as my title might suggest. I actually write a lot of documentation for our medical devices for when they get sent to the FDA for application. And so I kind of outline a lot of the interfaces between our products. And also right now I'm working on our requirements. I identify as a cis lesbian. I forgot my pronouns are she, her. I was born in China and was adopted into an Irish family. So I feel like that influenced a lot of my identity as well. So I grew up in Rhode Island in a very small town. It was not as diverse, especially as it is here. The atmosphere very pushed like the status quo. And if you were outside of that, you were kind of considered other. I went to a all girl Catholic school. And so the community there was very group based. And I feel like I was more of a floater. So I was able to fit in and like the nerdy group or the athletic group or everything else. So I kind of found community everywhere and nowhere, if that makes sense. I feel like I didn't have a specific role model. I feel like for me personally, I kind of saw different aspects of different people that I aspired to and didn't choose like one specific person. So I felt like that was a lot of pressure for myself and them. Growing up in an all girls school, it was um, a little different. I feel like when all my friends started being like interested in boys and everything, I wasn't feeling that way. I think I didn't really think about it that much until I got into middle school, high school age and didn't know how to articulate like the feelings that I was feeling towards like friends or other people that were around me. I'd say in high school, I kind of like quote unquote came out more and was more comfortable in identifying in a certain way. And one that comes to mind is like the first Pride I went to, which was back in Rhode Island. That was the first time I experienced a large group of people who were openly out and like there was no tension or like hesitation in that. They were just like all very free and that was very healing. Growing up in the summers, I would go to a lot of like different academic camps. So that's how I spent most of my time when I wasn't in school. And so I think my mom kind of pushed like engineering and because I was good at math and science, kind of how everyone usually says that, but I really enjoyed it. And then my mom is also a nurse. So I feel like I had a lot of insight to the health space from a young age. And so combining that, that's how I got into biomedical engineering um, when I went to college. And did you know that you wanted to study that like going into college or was it something you kind of figured out during college? I think I knew that by the time I was applying to colleges, I had thought of other STEAM related fields like forensics and stuff like that, but I landed on biomedical engineering. I went to a private school and so they, it was a college prep school. And then I went to University of Southern California and studied biomedical engineering and I had an electrical emphasis. So I feel like BME forces you to kind of be experienced in a lot of different fields like biology, chemistry, physics, math. And so I had a lot of experience in a lot of different topics. I was fortunate that I was able to get an internship after my junior year during the summer. And so they ended up giving me a full-time position and that internship happened to be in software. So that's why I'm a software engineer now. I actually wasn't looking for a software engineering role. I kind of just, they came to me. Was it like a hard transition to start kind of focusing on software engineering from there? Yeah, the, the internship was in algorithms and we were using MATLAB, which is like a visual coding language. So it was more familiar to me, which made it easier, but I definitely had a lot of like imposter syndrome in the beginning. And sometimes I still do in terms of like that technical space, since that wasn't what I studied. Is there anything you learned along the way about like how to kind of confront that imposter syndrome? Like any, I guess, any wisdom that you've gained from that experience that you would like share? I think the big thing for me is one, like since 
I didn't apply for that role. I think reminding myself that they came to me and eventually hired me, you know, and then gave me the full-time role, you know, it's a sense of validation that there's a reason why they're choosing you. And then also I think just not being afraid to ask questions is good and being more proactive if you're feeling like frazzled or confused in a topic rather than trying to like pretend that you, you're getting everything and then you kind of crash and burn later. My job specifically, since I don't code and do a lot of the technical writing, it's made me a better communicator and definitely enhanced my skill of being able to take a complex idea or system and be able to break it down to someone who might not understand it fully. Um, I think that's very transferable. My role requires me to, to talk to a lot of different departments. So I'm talking to developers, testers, people outside of software, quality people. And so you really have to think of where all their perspectives are and how they all come together and how do we translate someone in a software perspective to someone in a systems one and what information do they really care about. Why is it so important that there are people kind of doing the, the work that you do within that field? Well, one, the documentation is needed in order to get our products approved so they can actually help patients. So that's one. Two, I think, you know, you can be the smartest person, but if you can't communicate your knowledge, then it doesn't have a benefit to it. So you need to be able to disseminate that information to everyone, even people who don't have your background. So I think if you're able to do that, you might even have more knowledge since you can break it down into a smaller piece. The diabetes location was the closest one to my school, to be honest, but also I think it's been easier to relate to and find like purpose in since a lot of my family members have diabetes, like it's a more common condition to have. So it makes it more real and tangible when we're going day to day. I've also been interested in looking at like assistive technologies, things to make products or technology more accessible. Having, like I said, my brother with cerebral palsy, that's something that I've always thought about growing up too. Is that a field you would be interested in working in potentially? I think because it's more niche, it's harder to get into, but yeah, it's definitely something I'm thinking about. I think fortunately he's pretty high functioning, but definitely growing up, going to a public school, there weren't a lot of resources for him. So I think like going in the space of personalized education um, would, would have been really beneficial. And just, I think, awareness of who he is and his capabilities and not stigmatizing them, I guess. I, I try to present authentically myself I think that's a big part of it for me. My specific company, we have a lot of ERGs and we have a pride one, but my location, it's not active right now. So I do see it in terms of like the global company, but not necessarily at my location. So I think for me, I've leaned into making sure that I present authentically as myself um, so that I feel proud and not trying to like fit into how other say women are dressing. I think for me, I'm fortunate that I'm, I've found like a community and a group of friends that are very accepting of who I am and how I express myself, as well as the workplace that I'm in. I've never gotten like a weird look or comment about how I present differently or anything. So it's been really nice in that way. I think as a company as a whole, you know, they have events either for education or, you know, they started raising the pride flag during uh, pride month. So steps like that have been good. I personally, I think sometimes those events are only attended by people in the community. And I would like to see more like allies participate in that as well. So maybe making it like mandatory or something. Usually most companies nowadays will have a pride related ERG, or maybe you're part of a different community that you relate to. So I would say look there first, but also I think we get stuck on like finding like a club or an ERG when also you can find community and just like your coworkers. It doesn't necessarily have to be like an organized thing, which can also be like powerful. It'll be more challenging depending on the 
the avenue you go in, say for software, for example, it's a very male dominated space. And so it's gonna depend on where you wanna go. Like BME, for example, is usually more feminine leaning. And so you see less of a gap there. So I think being aware of which space you're trying to go into and not being afraid, even if you are like the only person there, because it's gonna start a chain reaction and have more people join. The more diversity that you can have in the development or innovation process, the better because you're gonna bring different perspectives and ideas that someone who doesn't have those experiences might not think of, especially working in the uh, medical device department. I think that it's important to focus on all of the different experiences of patients that you could have if you only try to pick the majority voices when you're designing something, you're missing out on so many other um, opinions and ideas that you wouldn't get. I think for engineering specifically, we have uh, so many opportunities to involve everyone instead of just the majority like it has been maybe historically. And so we have a good opportunity now to include those people. For me, uh, when we were we were looking at an app and thinking about when you're designing, you know, what the the screen should look like and everything, how big the buttons are maybe per se. I was thinking about how like maybe older people, it's harder for them to press on a button because they have like less moisture in their hands. And so that was something like I asked if um, it was being considered or not, since I feel like there can uh, be like ageism in designing things, so. It's an example. What made you think of that? Like, was it something in your life or just something that like you had learned about that you were able to bring into your work? Like I said, having a mom as a nurse, I think health is usually like in the back of my mind. I also have a brother who has mild cerebral palsy. And I think just experiencing, you know, grandparents or loved ones getting older because of my experiences, I think about that more and just the aging process in general and how able bodies are different than other ones. For our senior design project, we got into groups and my team did a, an assistive pill dispenser. So we had to like cat it from scratch, do all the like electrical components, and we worked on LabVIEW, which is also like a visual programming language. So that was really cool to go from the ideation process all the way to like fabricating it. Coming from a BME background to a software one, I think I'm proud of not being afraid or I guess not quitting when I had those moments of feeling like an imposter and pushing through those. I think I'm kind of just seeing where things are going at this point. If you told me that I'd be a software engineer, like when I was going in college, I would have laughed at you because I didn't think I'd be interested in it. So I'm trying to be open to new possibilities and things that I'm thought I wouldn't like because I've been proven wrong before. Do you have any like personal goals or anything for near or far future? I think like I said, the how our pride ERG at my local location isn't active. I think eventually I'd like to try to get that started and start having like events and everything there. Do you have any activities or hobbies that you do? Um, yeah, my free time, I started rock climbing. I also play like pickleball, I play golf. And in general, I just like to travel and see new places. Do you rock climb like in a rock climbing gym or like you like outside? I haven't gone outside yet, but yeah, I just boulder inside. Something I like to say and something I've heard is to be patient when you're talking to people who maybe don't understand what it's like to be part of the community or know someone who's part of the community. Like they're coming from a place of their whole world has been one way for their entire life and now someone is challenging that view and that's scary for anyone. As much as it might seem daunting, like you have to be patient with them and hopefully they'll come around once they see who you really are. Thinking of other community members who might be interested in kind of doing the type of work that you do, but they don't really know where to start, like what advice would you give them in terms of like where they should start looking for, I guess, just to kind of get their jump start into this field? I would say network, in school, like join clubs. I was part of, uh, we called it Quest, Queers in Engineering, Science and Technology. And I became the corporate co-chair. So we were working a lot with companies to 
have like events with them, have a smaller group of people where it was only people from the community or allies uh, that got to take part in those events. So it was smaller, like more comfortable. They, those um, representatives were aware of the space they were walking into. So I feel like it sets you up to be more comfortable and not have to deal with like that layer of, oh, I have to think of my identity when I'm going into a professional space follow your interests and to not get discouraged. Like how I said, growing my school was very clicky. I was considered like the nerd sometimes, or, you know, I'm different because I have different interests and to not let that stop you. Instead, lean into it and you'll find people who also have those interests and that'll give you a common bond and something to keep you going. Like we talked about earlier, it's important to have every voice heard and that yours matters and It'll help progression and make a difference in the world if you keep going.